Um, Bob Myers, um, Alani Porter, and and John Coffin. So I'll let them introduce themselves to start with, and I've got some particular questions about how to maximize people's value. Check. I'm Bob Myers. I work with Avant Garde Residential Management Services. Anthony D'Augustine, the broker, and my friend is in the audience tonight. Thank everybody for coming out. Appreciate you enduring this weather and the heat to come out and, and be a part of this uh, AMA. And I thank Caston Long and, and Jim and his group. They do a marvelous job putting this together. So it, it gives us an opportunity to get together and, and give you some valuable information to help you make your better uh, investment decisions. So Avangar is a full service uh, property management company. We're also heavily involved in the repositioning program that is currently happening throughout the city. Uh, a lot of remodel programs going on with us. So any questions I can help you guys with that, I'd love that opportunity. So we'll talk more. Thank you so much. Buddy. And thank you for inviting us uh, to be represented, uh, represented tonight. I'm with CalCap Properties. Uh, we also provide full service property management. Uh, we've been in the Phoenix area for over a decade now. Uh, we manage uh, units where we do a lot of value add as well to the extent that we've done about 6.7 million in renovation work in conjunction with the property management uh, of our properties and others uh, throughout not just Arizona, but uh, five other states. So we are ever expanding and uh, we're happy to be a part of this event tonight. And John Coffin, Cass and Long. Um, I've been doing real estate for 20 years. Uh, I came out to Arizona buying apartment buildings with a group from Philadelphia and uh, decided to stay here, brought my wife out here and raised a family. And I, I love Arizona and um, continue to manage some of my own properties and um, help you guys find good investments. Linda and I got together and partnered up um, last year and we decided we're gonna work on the, the 50 to 250, maybe 300 unit um, type uh, properties and portfolios. And um, that's, what, that's what we do. Good, thank you. So, um, so here's some of the meat of the, uh, the meeting tonight. Um, and I'll throw this to Bob to start with. When you are managing uh, a complex for an owner um, and they're getting ready to sell, are there certain things that you try to do extra on that property or is it business as usual? What are the things you look for to help maximize the value on a sale of your property? Well, and during a sale, one of the more important aspects is stabilization. So we try and, and create a stable environment that would carry through the escrow so there'd be no snags in the closing. You, you know, you, you'll, you'll look, you try and get a, a heads up from your owners, and if they allow you that opportunity, you can go in and maybe you can do a little freshen up on some of the units and maybe increase the rents a little bit because we all know that the price is driven off of the cap, off the cap rate in the NOI. So you try and get your rents up as high as you can. So my, my recommendation if someone was getting ready to sell their property is let, let's make sure your curb appeal is appealing. Um, so you have people uh, making good first uh, impression and then your stabilization so you can show that the uh, bank that you have a valuable asset that can make its mortgage payment. And then just try and get your rents up as, as best as you can with the budget that you have to invest with. Do you have problems with the uh, owners saying, I don't have enough money to fund your your thoughts for fixing up the property? I, I saw that before. It's becoming a little bit less and less because I think seeing is believing for a lot of owners nowadays. I don't think that five years ago I could convince an owner to put maybe twenty five dollars or $30,000 a door in renovating their apartment house and convince them I'm going to raise the rent $300 and they're going to make a million bucks when I'm done. That was a tough one to sell. Today, it's a lot easier. There's a lot easier. You've got more experienced buyers out there. You've got a lot more history out there. And they're seeing the, the uh, results of the repositioning and raising your rent two, three, four hundred dollars $400 a month each apartment. The math is astounding. It's, it's crazy. Thanks, Bob. So, Lonnie, um, CalCap probably has, you look for a little larger properties than Bob. What's, what's your normal size property that you manage? Well, uh, you have to remember, not only do we manage properties that our investors through the CalCap Advisors arm invests in, uh, but equally so, we manage for other uh, people. So those 
those goals can be varied among them. Uh, that's probably the most important thing that we do when it comes to maximizing for an exit. And that would be to make sure we thoroughly understand what the investor's goal is for the property for the long run from the moment we start managing. So if you can understand what an exit strategy is, whether it's a three-year plan or uh, when it meets a certain threshold plan, if that comes before for some, uh, or if it's a longer term hold, that helps to dictate how you manage to the decisions and the feedback that you give them along the way because you're always able to look beyond the horizon to say, well, here's how it's going to affect that in the long run. Um, and I think, you know, in, in adding to a very good list of, of uh, things that you look for to do, uh, also, you know, aside from a refresh to be able to help maximize the value of a sale, uh, we really look for the things that don't cost them money, like tightening up uh, and reducing the number of month-to-month -month roll so that it looks good for the banks, uh, being able to show a good, strong history, what we call uh, running through the tape as opposed to just managing as usual, which means you really want to be able to show that there's still added value ahead for the next buyer. And so and how, you do, need how to, do you do that, Bonnie? Well, you isolate a few instances to be able to test that theory and to be able to have that proof of concept available for the brokers as part of their sale. So we'll work in conjunction with the seller, we'll work with their broker, and we'll describe a couple of things they could do. Uh, one might be that, hey, in the past, yeah, we've renovated to a certain extent. What could we do new that would probe and prove that there's added upside premium still to be had? And that's very important, as you know, because when anybody comes along to do the math, they're going to want to see that there's still some additional upside. They don't want to just see how well you've renovated the property to date. When we went to the uh, IRM CCIM forum that they hold annually, this was in, in January, they talked about, I mean, Bob's talking re repositioning. So there's different levels. And I, I think they were talking about the silver, the platinum, the gold, something like that. And so every time at some point, you can raise the quality of the apartment complex. And, and both of you guys, I'm sure, would be good to say, okay, let's look at the market. Let's look at what the rents are. What could we do with this property going forward? And I did hear Lonnie talk about the fact she works with a broker, so I like that part too. <laughs> John, that was got, just for you. Yeah, there. John, you got some thoughts? Yeah, I would, I would just say, you know, um, in, in the past, we would say get your rent roll up as high as you can. Um, and now it's almost, we're, we're saying, burn your leases off, get month to months. Because when we have a buyer come in and they look at the rent roll, they're not looking at a T12 or even a T3. They're looking at how quickly can they get their rents up to what they expect market's going to be. Um, and I think that, that bodes well with the lending as well. I mean, if you have a rent roll with 50% on month to month, um, there's a good argument that you can say, hey, don't go off T3, go off what we project on our rents. Um, so you can get a better uh, loan to value. Um, and I think also when a buyer looks at that and sees all those month to months, there's an assumption that um, they're asleep at the wheel. They're not really paying attention and there's more meat on the bone than there may be. So that's kind of the recommendation. Good, John. Um, so um, Bob, what's your best owner look like to you? One with money. <laughs> okay. All right. But by like Lonnie was talking about, you have a dialogue in the beginning with the owner and, and then you work things out, probably continued communication. How often do you talk to the owner? What do you look for from the owner of a property that you're managing for? Well, on the repositioning projects, we try and make a weekly meeting with our owners, a progress uh, by telephone. Uh, most of our owners don't live locally, uh, but they'll make a trip over occasionally. So we'll make a, uh, a weekly meeting with our owners, give them a progress report. Um, and what we try and do is we try and it can uh, reassure them that the pace is, is on schedule, that the budget is on schedule, and that the progress is being made. Uh, they're concerned that once we get the uh, units completed, that we've had done the efficient marketing to fill that unit and achieve that goal of that higher rent. You, you know, I, I say to my uh, colleagues that I think uh, market rent has become a competitive sport in Phoenix. So everybody has this, I want to get market rent, I'm going to get market rent. That's, that's, the, that's where you start, is what will that particular building in that particular neighborhood, what is market rent? And then you draw your plan on how do I achieve market rent? How do I compete with that guy down the street that's getting that top dollar? 
What did he do? Backsplash, brush nickel, you know, six panel doors, whatever. What gingerbread did it require? And then you do the math. What's it gonna take to get my building to that condition? And can I compete with that market rent? And is there a value? Similar thoughts, what's your best owner look like, Lonnie? Besides your own partners. <laughs> yeah. Well, our best owner uh, has a organization where they tend to have people that are more focused on the day-to-day -day operations on the ground. Therefore, weekly is a good idea, and they're very uh, well-versed in our progress and also what our timeline goals are to begin with. Because of that, they're able to answer a lot of questions up the ladder to the extent that you know, we're not the ones that are saying, hey, you know, the reason why it's delayed is because there was a setback because the power company hit a pole over, there was a pole that was hit, it took us offline for a week. You know, there, there are all kinds of communications that can happen in the course of a week that three months later when somebody asks why it's not done when it was scheduled to be, that person is actually an advocate at that point because they're able to say, well, actually these are the three things that happened when we got out the gate. So remember, we reset the timeline it's not on them. Uh, so that kind of communication with somebody that's on the ground is actually paying attention on a weekly basis is just as important as the guy at the very top with the checkbook who is looking at the financials and maybe only talking to you monthly or quarterly uh, for his list of questions. Okay. Um, so, John, because you're looking at this as a broker and an owner, um, what do you look for in management companies when you get a listing on a property and what do you expect in the management company? And we certainly appreciate the management companies when we have a listing because we ask them to do a lot of extra work, providing things, details, financials, um, massive showings, maybe one, two, three times. And it, it's just a pain in the butt for management companies. And they may lose the management. Um, John, any, any thoughts on what you look for in a management company when you get a listing? Well, just, just to um, be prepared to do the walkthroughs, give us the best units to, to see. Um, you know, if there's a rent roll change, um, let us know immediately so we can get that changed up. John, we talked a little bit earlier today about um, tenant uh, retention and things that, uh, so you don't have the, the turn. In fact, let me throw this out. And I, this, this percentage amazed me. Of folks that, that manage properties or have properties managed for them, what is your annual turnover? What, what kind of percentage? Ben, what kind of turnover does CalCap keep for you down in Tucson? What kind of turnover are you getting? Oh, no, I, I have to ask Greg. I work on our buying and selling or deal stuff. Steve, uh, uh, Steve <laughs> what about you've got houses and apartments? What kind of turnover do you get? 50 to 60. So every two years, everything is changing hands. Je uh, yeah, okay. Jeff, you got a lot of master meter properties. Do you have uh, 50 to 60 percent, would you say? And so how do you keep it lower than some of the other folks? What are you doing? John, any other thoughts that you've gotten from other owners? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so Phoenix is known as, you know, it's always been in the, the, the bottom 10 of uh, lease renewals. Um, you know, it's, it's somewhere around 45% uh, lease renewal. Um, and now you've got this gig economy that they're talking about where uh, all these people are moving in and having, you know, short contract work or, or uh, you know, just part-time work. Um, so I think we're going to continue to stay at that, you know, 47%, maybe 50%. And how do you retain and get up to 60 or 65%? And I think, you know, the, 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 the two main factors outside of someone moving away from the area is service and lack of community. So lack of service and lack of community. So if you can really get the service up, which I think Jeff talked about that, the work orders immediately, maybe have an app for that, um, and then really build the um, community aspect of it, I think that would really hold the retention. I think a tenant would be willing to spend a little bit more, stay where they feel like it's a community, than um, go, go down the street or whatever it is. And, and, and how do you do that? I mean, uh, a few years back, um, where's, An where's Anthony? Anthony, you remember we, were, uh, we had a, uh, a number of units here that Anthony was managing for me, and we had a portfolio of 3,000 units across the country in 17 markets. 
And we had an asset manager that came on and said, we're going to do this signature community investment touch. Yeah. So we wanted to make all the, uh, all the properties like a little bit of a hotel feel. Um, and Anthony did a great job. He got every, all the tenants got free 24 hour fitness. They got, uh, you know, discount at the local coffee shop, a discount at the, um, dry cleaners. And one of the other things that, that we did was a Sunday newspaper. <laughs> so we had a 64 unit building with, uh, all studios and ones. And Anthony sends me a picture on a Monday morning of the Sunday newspaper. And I think there were like 61 papers stacked up. <laughs> so sometimes you miss the mark, but. You know, if you can, if you can get that community feel, get the local restaurant to give a, a, a discount and even a happy hour every month and, and all those local services, somebody feels special if they're getting a 10, 15% discount with a little card that says they live at, you know, Via Ventura or wherever it is. Um, so that's, you know. Lonnie, what, do you guys do anything particular for tenant retention, something like that, community uh, friendliness and awareness? Do you have, what, do you do anything like that? Well, first of all, we do try to have regular uh, get-together socials um, at uh, each of our properties where the community managers are, you know, setting a date around a theme, whether it's holiday-related or if it's just seasonally, it's the time to do it. Um, so we do try to do that as well. We also like to make sure that we keep you know, keep the property safe and keep that communal feeling, to your point, uh, doing the crime-free -free prevention and all that. But, you know, what you find is that when you create a family atmosphere, you know, they become your best, uh, you know, your, your best uh, backstop to any kind of problems developing because they just aren't having it. You know, they're, they're helping to police the community. Uh, they're telling their neighbors, hey, that doesn't fly here. You know, you're finding that those interventions that otherwise create a apartment attitude instead of a community attitude uh, are diminished quite a bit. So we're, we're, you know, very much emphasized Bob, that. Bob, any, any thoughts on what you guys might do to keep tenants? Definitely. We're very involved in social activities where we'll have the seasonal parties. Um, <clears throat> on my bigger buildings, I'll have uh, a coffee with the manager morning. We'll have yoga classes that when we have uh, little community centers. Oh, absolutely. We uh, do uh, early bird raffles to get people to pay their rent on time. And, and it's kind of like a competitive game where they can win something. So that's what it is. You know, when I had my building out in Avondale, Parkside Palms, uh, we did the Christmas party. We did the Halloween party. We did an annual uh, children's event for soccer or something like that. I minimized my turnover because people got used to that. And when they thought maybe, well, maybe it's time to leave. And then one of the family, well, we can't leave now because the Christmas party's coming. We can't leave now because the soccer match is in a month. They get involved and, and they make it more than just a place, uh, an apartment. They make it a place to live. And it's very important. Good, uh, good input. And, and I guess, again, that's the bottom line. The less turnover you have, the less cost it is for the turnover and less downtime for rents coming in so and I, and I would say you know looking at it underwriting it um, as a broker or buyer you know the first thing i look at is how quickly is the lease going to burn off the, the other thing i look at is how long has this tenant been here um and if the resident's been there for a long time um it tells me something about the property it, it tells me that the micro location is good the property's good i can make that argument to a buyer that um, this property is better than the one down the street because the tenants want to stay here at close to market rent. Um, so I think that, that, that kind of bodes well. I think also if everybody is involved in testing the market with their vacancy. So when somebody's in a unit and they're looking for somewhere else to live, they don't have the, uh, many affordable opportunities of where they're at. So I think it also comes to retention in itself to stay place because they can't go down the street or the property in the floor Scott, you want to give a, a story about what you did on your property um, that you had and you were telling the tenants they're going to have to move because their rents were too low and you gave them the ability to shop? Just say, we'll hear you. Actually, I have idea. I had a property down in, in Phoenix here a couple, three or four years ago, and after I bought it and closed on it, uh, the rents were ridiculous low. And I wasn't gonna come in and 
spend 20, 30, 40,000 a unit and renovate it. I didn't want to rock the boat. I wanted the income to keep coming in on continuity. So I approached the tenants and said, look, you haven't had a rent increase for three or four years. It's your way out of step. I could choose to not renew your lease and put you out on the street looking for a place to live, but I'd like to keep you. Market is 950 for this unit, but I'll let you have it for 850 and I'll come in and fix whatever you need. You need a new fridge, how about a new counter, replace the top. It's do what you can to keep a good tenant. And you know, Bob shared this with me years ago. He said, you know, if we, if we lose that tenant, we gotta completely redo the unit. We're out a bunch of money, we're down a couple of months, we maybe have to pay a leasing commission. We gotta start from scratch with a new tenant. We got a good tenant here. Let's try to find a way to keep them on a budget. And it works really well because the tenant is blown away that you take the time to talk to them, ask them what they need. You'd be surprised how little it would take to make them happy. And you may not get market rent, but you'll get close. Thanks, Scott. I thought it's a good story. Mm -hmm. Tenant retention, don't have them move. They don't know the market. Let them go shop the market. Find out that they're, they're going to be just fine where they are. Um, questions from the group that, that managed? Ben. It was a 75 unit, and uh, they were getting 30 to 60 phone calls a month to 911 when we bought it. And the police sergeant down there, um, we had a, actually had a bomb squad situation where we had, no joke, 50 people between the police and fire department and all that. And they asked, why did you buy this property? And I said, just watch. Now in the past four months, we've had 100% retention rate of unleased renewals. So, it, And who's your management company, by the way? That one's actually self-managed. <laughs> But on that one, um, it was uh, <laughs> um, on that one. We're we're still below market rents, uh, and that's why we've had the the retention. And people have seen the transformation because we're down to two or three phone calls a month to nine one one, and they're minor minor phone calls like suspicious person on property or a domestic dispute. Nice sure. job. One of the things that I I've heard that uh, so when you're going to sell a property, a couple of things that we watch. Um, is for every type unit you have in your complex, you make sure you get as high a rent as you can so you can prove to the lender that that is the market rent. Um, and the other thing that I think John mentioned, and maybe you guys can echo this, uh, maybe not to turn a lot of long-term leases in. Um, I'm not, sometimes banks like the long-term leases, but for an owner, it's nice if you, if you are below rent or it looks like you're below rent, an owner can come in and, and put those rents up 25 or 50 bucks. Any, any last thoughts, uh, Bob? I think you're absolutely right, Jim. You know, in positioning, you just want to show performa what is, what is potentially possible. You know, you can say what's possible or you can show what's possible. If you turn one unit uh, of each style and you got that rent maximized, that shows potential right there. And it leaves meat on the bone for the next guy to, to follow suit. So I think it's a very good strategy. Yeah, I think, um, as I mentioned, there is a plethora of ways that owners want to approach their strategies. And our, to, be, to be mindful of, our job is to execute on their strategy. Uh, sure, we can provide advice and we can counsel where we think we might do something a little different. But always keeping in mind their pro forma is what you're executing on. And to that end, there are going to be owners that look at the rent roll before they purchase and they're going, okay, I'm going to move out everybody as they roll. I'm doing the, the turns within the first 16 months. Uh, and I don't care that it's going to make my occupancy suffer and my cash flows are going to be a little staggered to get to peak. Um, and others are going to want you to get the most out of it by going in and doing the best service possible to get those residents happy with the change in ownership. So everybody has a different strategy. You just have to be the kind of property management company that's prepared to listen well and execute uh, that vision. Yes. John, thoughts? Last minute thoughts? No, just, just reiterate, you know, we have such a high demand for buyers right now. Um, and again, we don't look at the, the T12. It's, it's really buyers are going in there and saying, you know, I, I want to roll my, my sleeves up and, and get it done. I just, I just 
don't want the, the long-term leases. It's going to take me a longer time to carry it and get the rents up to where I need them to be. Um, Arbel, you picked up some of the cards already. Do you have any questions for these guys? If you could, please uh, take these sheets that uh, are in the folders for a moment and jot something on there, whether it's good, bad, ugly, a question we haven't covered yet that you'd like to see answered tonight. We're actually going to pick these up right now. And uh, also, I thought if you have a friend who isn't getting our emails and stuff that you want on our list, please make sure that you jot their name down and we'll give you a call and, and uh, try to get their information from you to make sure we get them connected. So please fill out these. I'm going to pick them up in the next 60 to 90 seconds. Okay, so again, the panelists we've had here and the panelists we'll have come up in a second, they're resources for you. I mean, we've had a little smittering of, of information. Um, these guys, gals, they're a wealth of information on all aspects of apartment ownership, management, repositioning, what you should do for repositioning, what, how do you find the market rents, how do you test the market rents, so at least you got to kind of know some of these folks here. The information, their contact information is on the, on the program sheet. So guys, thank you very much for being part of the panel. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, we had a question right over here on your right. Jeff. Yeah, no, it's a great question. So the question is, is having a month-to-month -month tenancy good or should you have you know, annual leases? And I think I'll, before, uh, you might just talk to some lenders and see what the flavor is uh, for different lenders to see. Again, if it's month-to-month, -month, it allows the buyer to look at and be able to raise the rents pretty quickly. Uh, and I, as mentioned before, sometimes banks like to see long-term leases, so maybe there's a blend of that. You mean banks have rules and regulations they want you to follow? Alex, you got a thought on that? Alex, you have another comment real quick? Especially when it's a strong borrower. Huh? Again, guys, thank you for being on the panel here. Appreciate this.